Welcome to Electro Online. You saw a fairly complicated method. The method of using the inverse matrix to solve a system of linear equations is not an easy method. It takes a lot of work, but there's a big advantage to that method, and let me show you why. So this was the original set of equations we we're dealing with. Let's say that the left side stays exactly the same, but let's say the right side changes. Now, normally, that would take a lot of work to do that one again. And maybe we have a whole bunch of those where the only thing that changes is the numbers on the right side of the equal sign. Well, once we have the inverse of the matrix, which never changes because the left side of those equations doesn't change, it makes it really easy to find the solutions to multiple sets of linear equations in three variables. Let me show you how easy it would be to change and find the solution for this one. So this is exactly what we had in the previous video. So what we need to do is simply change the B matrix, which means we're going to redo these calculations and end up with a new solution set for X, Y, and Z. So let's see how easy it would be to do that. So all we need to do here is plug in, and let me use a color here. We'll take two, zero, and five. And so what would be the multiplication now? So we keep this very same inverse matrix A because the left side doesn't change. So we're going to multiply for the value for X. We get one times two plus negative one times zero. And then we get plus zero, oh, here we go. So one times, one times two, negative one times zero plus zero times five. And for the second value for Y, we get negative two times two plus five times zero, plus, so we get this times this. See, I have to do it over again, so I go this way, this, this way. My left finger goes to the right, my right finger goes down, so it's negative two times two, five times zero, one times five. And for the value for z, I get negative one times two, plus three times zero, plus one times five. And for the x, we get 2 plus 0 plus 0, that gives me a 2. Negative 4 plus 0 plus 5, that gives me a plus 1. Negative 2 plus 0 plus 5, that gives me 3. And so the values for x, y, and z in this case are 2, 1, and 3. Just to make sure we did it correctly, let's see if I get the right value when I take my equation to check. Let's take the middle equation, that looks like the easiest one to check with. So we start with the equation x plus y minus z is equal to zero. Plug in the values for x, y, and z. x, y, and z. So x is two plus y, which is one, minus z, which is three. Is that indeed equal to zero? And sure enough, three minus three, zero equals zero. And it looks like we found the three correct values for x, y, and z. So if you're wondering, is there some logical benefit to this method? Yes, if you have multiple sets, of equations where only the right side changes and there's examples where that happens in certain applications of finance and math then that makes it easy all we have to do is just simply change the b matrix crank it out real quick and we get the new values for that particular set of, of equations and that is how it's done is there any similarities into those planes when the constant last constant is changed you would because on the So what does it do? It shifts it. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because there's three variables. So that's something, you know, turns out that's something we're going to be talking about probably in the next chapters. But yeah, it's not quite as simple as that. This has, rather than a geometric application, this has more application in finance and business and things like that. So. Mm -hmm.